So, hello everyone and welcome to this press conference. I am the press communique of uh, Mayor Plant. So in order, Ms. Valérie Plant, Mayor of Montreal, will speak. And then Mr. Luc Godbout, who is the Chair of Economic Expert Committee set up by the City of Montreal and Research Chair in Fiscality and Public Finances at Sherbrooke University, followed by Ms. Raquel Fonseca, who holds a Research Chair in Intergenerational Economic Issues at the University of Quebec in Montreal and is also Cyrano Fellow and member of the committee, will speak, followed by Mr. Richard Schumer, who is a professor at at the McGill University School of Urban Planning. We also have all the other members of the committee who are in video conference. So for journalists during the question period, all the members of the committee will be able to answer. Just let us know who you wish to ask your question of. Without any further ado, Madame Plante. Thank you very much. So, of course, I wish to salute those who are here at this table with me today, Mr. Godbout. Mr. Schumer and Ms. Fonseca, as well as all of the colleagues of this very special committee who are with us, joining us through video conference. So as you know, the COVID crisis seriously affected Montreal's finances. This is something that we spoke to very early on during the crisis. It is important to remember that Montreal had record economic performances before the crisis. We were the city with the strongest economic growth in the country. And so so that is what allows us to fully play a role of economic engine here in Quebec, but also throughout the country. With the present health crisis, the income of the city have melted, the expenses have multiplied themselves, economic activity was put on pause. Well, the city of Montreal has ended up with quite the challenge, that of ensuring an efficient recovery of the economy of the metropolis while ensuring the financial health of the city as well as the general health of the population. In order to understand the economic conjuncture right now, the implications of this crisis on the Montreal economy and to give ambitious solutions linked to the scope of the transformation that will have to be brought on the economic structure of the city, of course, in the context of COVID, we have brought together a committee of economic experts who have been given the very challenging task of what to do in order to reach those goals. This committee, of which the emeritus members come from different horizons, have acted pro bono. It was presided by a summit in Quebec, Mr. Le Godbout, who is the chair of economic or the research chair in fiscality and public finances from Sherbrooke University. The committee got together a few times, and that since the 21st of April. They worked very quickly, despite a very short lapse of time, and they were able to propose a very in-depth analysis with extremely pertinent recommendations on the measures and actions that we have to take into account in order to be able to keep going forward. The conclusions of our economic experts will come and feed the work of the advisory committee for for the relaunch of the Economic Recovery Montreal. I announced this a couple of weeks ago. The work made by Mr. Goodbo's committee is really impressive and will help us complete the recovery plan of the City of Montreal, on which we are working with the participation of many economic sto stakeholders of the city, and that we will be revealing over the next few weeks. I wish to present to you, or introduce rather to you these members, and thank them for the work. So this committee, presided by Mr. Goodbo, he was with Mr. Richard Schirmer, who is with us here today, who is the professor and the director of the School of Urban Planning at McGill University. Ms. Raquel Fonseca, who holds the research chair in intergenerational economic issues at the University of Quebec in Montreal, or the UCAM, and she is also a Cyrano Fellow. Mathieu Arsenault, who is economist in chief, the assistant at the Banque Nationale. Mr. Jean Martin Hassan, who is chief of investment at CIOS. Mr. Pierre André Bouchard, Saint Amand, who is professor at the National School of Public Administration. Mr. Francois Delorme, who is a professor and economist at the University of Sherbrooke. Mr. Pierre Delorme, professor at Université du Québec in Montreal. Mr. Pierre Fortin, 
Emeritus Professor, University of Quebec in Montreal, Mr. Clément Gignac, Vice President and Economist in Chief at ER Group. Otade Tamini, professor at University Laval and Cyrana Fellow, and finally Mr. Nicolas Sorn, general director of the Quebec Observatory of Inequalities. The Montreal recovery is a unique challenging event because of the concentration of the economic activity, but also because of the particular situation of the fact that we are the epicenter of the crisis right now. We must be very prudent so that this recovery be progressive and does not hurt the efforts made by the population to limit the spread of the virus. The recovery has to be planned in a proactive way and more than anything ambitiously since the economic success of Montreal will have many effects on the rest of Quebec. The recommendations of the Economic Expert Committee who that reach a consensus, and that is also really impressive, go along those lines. And we salute the fairness of it, and we wish to reassure all members of the committee that their work is going to be inspiring our recovery plan. And I will let, of course, Ms. Godbu, Ms. Fonseca, and Mr. Schirmer give you in detail what the reports are, but let me go over the main recommendations. Since the beginning of the pandemic, the City of Montreal has been very proactive in many different aspects. We have set up certain of our public spaces to ease physical distancing, which is an essential and necessary condition to limit the spread of COVID-19. We have pushed back the second payment uh, installments of taxes with many measures of financial and strategic measures for enterprises, for example, helping them go digital. And we try to respond in the best way possible to the needs that appear because of COVID-19, and we had to adapt ourselves very quickly. Our actions were numerous, and we always had the conviction of, uh, conviction of going the right way. The report of the Economic Expert Committee that confirmed our approach which is obviously very good news that puts light on the exceptional work that is that was done by the different teams of the City of Montreal, and I wish to thank them for their work. The report confirms first the importance of seizing this occasion of the recovery of our economy to increase our resilience, accelerate our ecological transition, and decrease social inequalities. It also confirms the particular status of Montreal in Quebec. As you know, Montreal got the status of metro uh, metropolis from the government of Quebec, and experts confirmed to us that Montreal should get specific tools a Montreal reflex in fiscal matters to be able to react when faced with crises such as the one that we're experiencing right now. Presently, it is not the intention of the city of Montreal to have a deficit in 2020-2021. You saw our administration uh, have colossal efforts with a plan that is very ambitious, but for the city to be able to have a good basis and to have an audacious plan, a financial help of the governments will have to be there, whether it be provincial or federally, particularly to cover the lack of collective transportation and the expenses linked to the health crisis. The report confirms that it is essential to link the economic development with social development and urbanism. We are therefore going to continue working in that sense. Businesses and stores were also analyzed. And the expert committee emphasized the necessity of having an urban delivery service, which has started over the past few weeks, and to, pursued, to proceed to digitalization that the city supports thanks to measures to support the companies. The report allows us to see the future with confidence. We are convinced that this input will contribute to make the recovery, economic recovery in Montreal successfully. And I'm announced, I'm very happy to announce that the members of the committee have accepted continuing with their work. The situation will continue evolving in Montreal. We're following that closely. That evolution is also linked to that of the entire world. And that is why the input of the expert committee is so important. And we're happy to be able to count on their expertise. I would like to end by mentioning the title that the 
group uh, chose, from deconfinement to a recovery for a resilient metropolis. The present crisis has shown certain fragile aspects and the necessity of working on the resilience of our economy was quite clear and our recovery will take into account the economic or sorry the ecological transition and social equality which appear to us to be more necessary than ever so once again i wish to thank all the members of this committee for their work their devotion and for having been able to give energy to this recovery which is demanding but absolutely necessary and also having all of these qualified experienced people who love Montreal. Having all these people around the table, it gives me trust and it gives me energy. So thank you to all of you and thanks uh, to all the ones that are joining us in video conference as well. And now Mr. Goodbu. Hello. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for this uh, receptivity about our proposals. Ladies and gentlemen, hello everyone. It is with a great deal of enthusiasm that today we're making public our report on the Montreal Recovery Plan. The pandemic has brought a health crisis that is an uh, economic and social crisis that has been unprecedented and Montreal has been very hard hit by this health crisis. So although the future is tainted by uncertainties, since we don't know how long this crisis will last or its scope, it is still important to work on the economic recovery. And that is why we salute the idea of the City of Montreal of having chosen to bring together an expert committee to understand, on the one hand, the economic conjuncture that we are in right now, the implications of this crisis for the Montreal economy. What can we anticipate in terms of transformation in the COVID context on the very structure of the Montreal econom economy and in all modesty at the end propose elements that could be used in the city's economic plan recovery. So I was very happy to uh, preside this expert committee of 12 people from all different areas, but who all hold dear the economic recovery of Montreal. So from, reco from confinement to recovery for a metropolis that is resilient is our title and it was really important for us to work on a consensus right from the beginning. Despite the short amount of time, the committee was able to analyze the situation and was able to propose various recommendations and orientations on the measures or actions that the city should take into account for its recovery. Of course, the committee does not pretend to cover every single aspect and as the mayor said, we remain available for things as they unfold in the future. This being said, our recommendations, the main ones, go towards a recovery that has to be coordinated with the other levels of government, a recovery that has to be targeted, and taking into account the health measures that are in effect right now, such as physical distancing. In the present context, the committee emphasizes the fact that we must act simultaneously on the one hand to support the economy in the short term, and on the other hand, by setting up the basis that will allow the metropolis to transform itself to be more resilient if there are other waves of this pandemic or other shocks. Although the situation is evolving quickly, the committee thought that it would be very good to draw up a state of the economic situation with a Montreal perspective. For the committee, Montreal, by the pandemic, Montreal has a concentration of economic activity that is very significant, an important density of the population as well. But because of that, in part, is, per, is the epicenter of the sanitary and health crisis. So as of the 31st of May, just how quickly the recovery is in order to be able to measure the deficit on a full year. It must also be mentioned that the deconfinement is done more slowly or perhaps more gradually in Montreal than elsewhere, which also delays the economic recovery. Consequently, we will need a solid recovery plan for the city of Montreal in order to be able to not only stimulate the economy, but also it has to be kept in mind that this recovery plan will contribute to the entire recovery for all of Quebec. Moreover, beyond the short-term impacts, the crisis transforms the citizens' habits, whether it be consumption habits, social interactions, work organization, and even 
the economic life in its entirety. For the committee, it is very difficult to conceive in the short term a return to the socioeconomic organization that we used to know before the, be the beginning of the pandemic. Within this context, the committee has tried to understand the possible in implications of COVID-19 and to see whether for Montreal there wouldn't be uh, occasions to be able to seize to give ourselves a more resilient and more sustainable economy. The committee has identified a series of economic transformations that are expected for Montreal. For example, a new normality for the labor market, where there will be more and more work done from home, which will have effects on the dynamic of the downtown area. We're talking about transportation and urban planning, which are being challenged. We're thinking about the perturbations of economic of, um, of the world commerce that will have also effects and more transversal access that are just as important, inequalities that could become exacerbated. And in the possible solutions, we're thinking about an economic transition that remains uh, something that has to be given priority. In the last section of the report, we were interested in how to help Montreal. Recommendations, orientations, on the one hand, to be able to get through the crisis, but also to be able to position the economic recovery favorably with gestures that are structuring as much as possible. The committee bases itself on practical considerations in order to select or identify the recommendations that will be the most promising. For our work, it was agreed to target recommendations that are in link with the economic recovery and that are that, that stem from the COVID-19 health crisis. The recommendations that are aligned with the Montreal competencies, or if they are not, to be able to clarify within the recommendations what is support that is required from the other levels of government in order to bring it so. And also recommendations that concern a short-term horizon mainly, but also middle-term. And these recommendations, and on it has to be said, do not take into account possible unplanned for uh, developments, whether they be positive or negative. So our recommendations don't take into account a quicker discovery of vaccine, for example, or the opposite, a second wave or third wave of the pandemic. So we're going to go with the level of information that we have right now. To structure our recommendations, we based ourselves on five guiding principles. The first, the recovery plan for Montreal must be coordinated with that of the other levels of government. Secondly, the recovery plan must concentrate itself on where we have the most important leverage effect. Third, the measures that are put in that recovery plan must be predictable, easy to understand, whether it be for the public as for the economic actors. Fourth, the measures that will have to be in the recovery plan will have to take into consideration the present context of physical distancing. And finally, there is no specific recommendation on the ecological transition, but the fifth guiding principle is that each of those recommendations must follow a ecological transition. So certain proposals, even if they can be set up in the short term, we deem them to be structuring for Montreal and increase the capacity of resistance of the economy. The report in all has 16 recommendations, all having to do uh, with 16 different themes. And of course, we're not here going to talk about each of those 16 themes in a press conference. I would invite you to consult the report. But we are going to uh, be able to talk about the most important. For example, financial support is very important. And what we have observed, a trend that seems to be international as well, because of course we made international comparisons, a trend that seems to uh, start existing is that local administrations receive help from other levels of the government in order to absorb the, the hits of the actions that the municipalities have had to do. It is therefore important in virtue of uh, the scope and the amplitude of the of these actions, we must coordinate with the different levels of government. So as a first recommendation, the committee wishes that Montreal get from the Quebec government the, tempor the temporary removal of the obligation to balance its budget. 
In the specific context, Montreal has to have the possibility of holding a deficit, must have consequently, must consider the emission of special bonds for the recovery of uh, the city's economy. But the committee is conscious that the financial situation of Montreal is already very tight normally. So inevitably, the crisis of COVID creates an additional pressure on the financial situation of the city. So the obligation of removing the balance, the balancing out of its budget does not remove the pertinence of a financial support from the other governments. These are not opposing. And also talking about financial support, the committee proposes analyzing the possibility of prolonging the tax installments, postponement, and even uh, offering perhaps lower taxes in specific actors, uh, uh, not actors, I'm sorry, in specific areas of the city. So we're in countries where the, the tax is the main income of the municipality, and by that I'm talking about property taxes, it shows how important it is. For example, the United Kingdom, and that it is generally financed by another uh, level of government. Of course, it's not just financial support that has been observed. We also have a, re a certain number of recommendations on businesses and uh, stores. For the committee, the Montreal enterprises and businesses have to be supported in many different ways in the framework of economic recovery. In order to do so, the support programs that already exist have to be adapted and executed with agility. For the committee, generalized support must be planned for to face the new commercial reality. For example, to favor the community, the proximity communities, for example, you know, in the neighborhood for SMEs, for example, urban deliveries and digitalization. But in order to be able to do those things, one needs means. And measures also have to support collective entrepreneurship. What that targets is we want to be able to compensate the high anticipation of bankruptcies that could take place in the commercial sector, and we ought to offer workers the possibility of taking back their companies under a co-op, uh, for example. And in that sense, there already are initiatives from the Quebec government with regards to this. So Montreal has to be concerted so that this element can become concrete. And Montreal could also have a role to play in the sector of inspection commerce to play, for example, think of emitting compliance certificates. We often hear about ISO 9000, well, we could think about ISO COVID. Without, before giving the mic to my colleagues, Ms. Raquel Fonseca and Mr. Richard Schumer, who are going to be talking about the issues of the labor force as well as transportation and urbanism, I would like to end by saying a few words saying that we also have recommendations on the cultural industry. Notably, for example, we're thinking that this industry must have financial support to favor the transmission of the great Montreal events towards online festivals and other platforms that are adapted to the situation. And my real last words will be to say that the committee wishes for a report to bring help to make decisions not only for the next recovery plan for the city, but also favoring the progressive deconfinement and to, in this way, better be prepared for possible new waves. So upon those words, thank you. And here's uh, Raquel. Thank you, Luke. First, I would like to say that it was a great pleasure to be able to participate to the work of this committee with my colleagues. And I salute the incentive, uh, the incentive of uh, the city of Montreal. So the pandemic on the Montreal market has been huge as an impact. If you remember, a few months ago, we we're talking about a lack of labor force, uh, and we're and even the economy was suffering from it because when we had to confine the city, the market was profoundly changed. We hope that it won't be very. Uh, well, we hope that most will be short term, but other. 
more permanent changes, at least for the next few years. So we've identified two important changes that represent the important challenges for the recovery of the Montreal labor market. First, the number of uh, the unemployed has had a very important increase more than ever. So this is according to the economic status. And even if there is an efficient recovery in the next few months, there will be important changes as far as the adequation between the positions that are offered by enterprises and the qualifications of the workers who will be looking for work. We are of the opinion that we cannot underestimate the change that many companies will undergo in this context because of COVID-19. The traditional mechanisms of pairing on the labor market will also be changed with a much important presence of, technolo of technology. So this represents a huge challenge of adaptation. So these concern the people who have kept their jobs but who had to learn how to work from home. Over half the workers in Quebec, and in particular those in Montreal, ended up having to work from home, which very often brought a very different sense between the conciliation of professional life and family life and probably created its own additional inequalities. Workers of the Greater Montreal area, just like other large cities in the world, had to adapt themselves very quickly. A lot of employers, including the city of Montreal itself, have to encourage working from home in order to make sure that what we've worked towards in public health, we don't lose these, at least until we find treatment. But we have to do it carefully because in an economic sense, everything is linked. And a great proportion of the economy of Montreal is nourished by the physical presence of workers, particularly in the downtown area. Therefore, we had to find means to dynamize the Montreal downtown core, which will be a lot more difficult with so many more people working from home. And it is with this spirit in mind, it's an important recommendation that we are making on the changes of the labor force, respecting the capacities of the city, so we want to be able to accompany this transformation. So we will recommend to be able to favor working from home, but with the main perspective, Montreal has to offer support to the small and medium-sized companies to be able to, to develop working from home while taking into account the reality of all merchants in the downtown area who depend on the arrival of workers on their territory. So in our opinion, these measures will be able to be used as references in order to find sustainable solutions that will lead to a robust, dynamic and inclusive dynamic recovery in Montreal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Fonseca. So, uh, hello. I am quickly going to have an overview of the approach of the Committee in Urbanism and Transportation, and after that we'll conclude in English. So, the urbanism of transportation are fundamental aspects to the economic recovery in Montreal, but they are important less directly, of course, than the budget interventions that like support to enterprises or labor. So we're going to, I'm going to start with uh, planning and development. So the planning and development of public spaces is a facilitator of economic, uh, economic activities. Of course, we don't have access to businesses if we don't have space to move around. The economy could not work, or at least not as well. Therefore, for the city, we have to be able to use the capacity of the city to re-plan the public spaces, keeping in mind public distancing and cohabiting between pedestrians, bikers, and other vehicles, because they are the ones that allow the economy to work, but also physical and mental health of a public. That was really challenged because there is a link between people's psychology and the economic health of the city, and that goes in part, at least, through the setup and planning and development of cities. And in terms of urban planning, and it was already talked about with Luc Godbout, the city has a role of inspector to play to make sure that buildings and stores respect the standards of social distancing, for example, to give trust to the consumers and workers, and could also take into account with the help of the owners and other tenants, the reemployment or reassignment of empty 
uh, stores because there will be the, some that will be empty, as we already know. So planning and development is very important as a facilitator, even if it is indirectly. Also, transportation is just as important, whether it be transportation of mer or merchandise or people is also a facilitator. Yes, it is an economic activity in and of itself, but it also facilitates all of economic transactions. It allows, for example, for workers to be able to find jobs or businesses and hospitals and institutions of having access to their labor force and, of course, to the merchandise to be able to transit and arrive to us. Public transportation also is particularly important because it particularly plays a role of equity, allowing all Montrealers, including those who don't have a car, to be able to get to work and to do what they have to do. It is therefore in that context of finding a balance between the necessary redevelopment of physical distancing and urban planning, and also the role that cars play for longer distance moving around. So the space that is taken by pedestrians and by uh, bikers is going to decrease the space for cars. Both are necessary, and there are discussions to be had on how to be able to bring those together. So in light of all these general considerations, the committee has four proposals that are specific to urban planning and transportation. The first, and it's not any kind of particular order, but is a coordination of actors. And when we think about transportation, the actors have to be coordinated. The large employers and uh, public transportation authorities have to coordinate themselves to make sure that uh, the ridership is in such a way that it respects social distancing. And we have to have an infrastructure plan to prioritize Montreal in the financial plans of that will come. And we have to think about the, the development of public spaces in consultation with the, uh, the uh, population and other stakeholders in order to respect public distancing, the fluidity between uh, pedestrians, bikes and other vehicles, and also think about help to rent in order to be able to support the most affected sectors. So finally, it is a question of recognizing the specific challenges posed by downtown. When a large part of its workers are office workers and also students, these people are working more and more from home, but the businesses, the bars, the restaurants, the cultural activities of the downtown area depend, a lot of them, on the presence of employees and students. So right now, downtown is more empty. That's a double problem. First, how to bring back the workers to the offices and the students in the universities on the one hand, but on the other hand, how to give uh, life back to businesses that don't have people coming to see them anymore. That's a, a specific problem that has to be studied. English? Um, I personally am an urban planner and economic geographer, but I'm delighted to have been invited on this expert panel of economists, which was set up by the city of Montreal and led by my colleague Luc Godbout. The panel was set up to think through some of the issues linked to Montreal's economic recovery. Now, the pandemic is an ongoing uh, problem and the future is uncertain. Our report starts by summarizing Montreal's current economic situation and then goes on to making some recommendations, taking a few broad parameters into account. So these broad parameters are as follows. First of all, the need for Montreal to coordinate its recovery with federal and provincial governments. It cannot go it alone. It needs to coordinate with other levels of government. There is also a need for the province to lift Montreal's balanced budget rule, at least temporarily, um, and for Montreal to obtain the financial support of high levels of government. Running a deficit is not an alternative to support, it is complementary to support from high levels of government. Our recommendations also take into account the city's particular competencies. A city cannot do everything, a city has particular areas in which it can act, and we have taken that into account. And finally, we have taken into account the fact that it is necessary to think of short-term measures to deal with the immediate deconfinement, as well as longer-term measures to, take, to make Montreal's economy more resilient in the longer term, not only resilient to other waves of the pandemic, but also to changing global realities that include a tightening of international trade and an environmental crisis, and both of these underlie a lot of our thinking. So, 
That was the broad context, and our report summarises the situation and makes 16 recommendations in five broad areas. Needless to say, I won't go over them all. I'll just mention the five broad areas in which recommendations have been made. Uh, first of all, we make recommendations in the area of budget and finance. So I've mentioned the budget deficit. We talk of support for other, from other levels of government, and we also discuss property taxes. The second area is workforce, and we talk of the move to remote work, the need for digital infrastructure to help that, the need to help people find jobs, online job searches. There are various recommendations in that area. The third area is retail and business. Um, and in that uh, area, we make recommendations with regards to helping businesses go online, to local purchasing, local deliveries, support for innovation, particularly when it comes to adaptations to the current crisis and to local networking, uh, how to manage vacant spaces, spaces, vacant spaces, there will be many vacant spaces in downtown and elsewhere, the social economy, which can maybe take over some businesses and some spaces, and the possibility of Montreal to inspect and certify premises if they are COVID ready. The fourth area is transport and planning. And we mentioned the necessity of coordinating the big players so that the big employers, the big institutions, the universities, and the transport organizations can organize themselves to get people safely to and from work and elsewhere. Uh, infrastructure planning, a design and planning of public space, which is critical, and maybe targeted rent support in particular areas of the city and for particular sectors. And the final area in which we make some recommendations is to do with the cultural industry and tourism with respect to the festivals, maybe putting more activity online, and maybe trying to organize some more local events. So we hope that these recommendations will assist the city in thinking through the recovery plan. And now I'll hand over for questions. I was about to say uh, thank you, uh, Monsieur Shimur, for, for, for this great, this great resume. You actually took my part. This is fantastic. <laughs> no, you did a really good job. Uh, maybe my last words, uh, because everything has been said so uh, nicely, but I, I am thrilled as mayor of Montreal to be, uh, to be able to count on such a, um, a great panel of distinguished professors and experts in economics here in Quebec. And, and it is fantastic for, for an administration to, to be able to uh, count on such amazing minds. So uh, thank you so much for that. And I think it shows how much uh, energy there is here in Montreal and how much we are, yes, resi resilient. And actually the title of the, uh, of the uh, report is definitely uh, related to how to be more resilient. And it is closely connected on our economic resilience, but how it is also connected to our uh, ecological and social resilience. So I want to thank you all and for those uh, with us, the other experts uh, of this panel, of this committee uh, that are watching from, from home. And yes, let's have some questions. Thank you. première question de Vincent Maisonneuve de Radio-Canada. Um, should we understand that a deficit of the city is possible even with uh, financial help from Ottawa and Quebec and without uh, the right to have a deficit is another fiscal burden inevitable? Well, what this uh, report shows us, and I will hand over the mic to Mr. Goodboo afterwards, is that the work that was done by the committee is to open up our horizons and to see what should be thought about for how things will unfold. Right now, in the present situation, we are already in a deficit. The help of both Quebec and Ottawa is not uh, entirely, we don't know exactly how much it's going to be. We're still waiting for it. And as was mentioned, as far as transportation, it's major. We need the necessary resources to be able to have our public transportation system keep going. And so that exercise, the work of this committee, is to be able to see how to get the necessary fiscal tools that are necessary with the government of Quebec and within that possibility, since we are the metropolis, and when we think about Reflex Montreal, it's about having this openness, this, this constant concern of how is the metropolis doing, and that possibility of leaving aside fiscal balance is one of the elements that is being considered. 
I don't have much to add, it's very clear. It's just an additional tool that we wish to offer to the existing toolbox for Montreal. In the present context, knowing that a deficit is already being apprehended, saying that we absolutely must rebalance the budget in the year, either by cutting in expenses or increasing the fiscal burden, we thought that it was really not a good idea. So opening the possibility of being able to hold a deficit, not necessarily getting ourselves there, but giving ourselves a possibility, we thought it would be a mitigating factor to favor the recovery of the city. For the expert committee, could you explain to us in one sentence the extent to which the recovery of the Montreal economy will be a complex operation and how the authorization of having a deficit will favor it? The complexity of the Montreal recovery goes through different elements, amongst them the fact that Montreal is dense, the fact that Montreal is axed on public transportation. These are good things normally, but right now it doesn't, doesn't go well with physical distancing. So there's a lot fewer people taking public transportation right now, but we have to continue having public transportation because it's important. Richard talked about it. So right now that is what is aggravating the Montreal deficit like any other municipal, uh, municipality that have significant public transportation. So it is within that perspective that the possibility of having a deficit becomes a good thing because Montreal would be able to keep the amounts that it needs to be able to stimulate economic recovery. Otherwise, there was a risk, you know, if we don't want to increase the, the taxes, that we would not be able to do anything else. So it opens up the possibility of doing uh, actions anyway, even if there is a deficit. We would need to set up an, a structuring infrastructure plan to prioritize Montreal. What does that mean? For example, as opposed to the uh, outlying cities around Montreal. Well, what has to be known is that the other levels of government, whether it be the federal or, or the Quebec government, might have infrastructure plan. But Montreal has to be ready to be able to sell its projects in order to be able to get the most possible out of these recovery plans from the other levels of government. So that is one way of maximizing the recovery plans of the other governments. It will also stimulate the Montreal economy. But if we don't have any project to present, we are not going to be taking part in that action. So that is why we were saying, prepare yourselves for those actions since there will be recovery plans, you know, substantiate your plans so that we can go forward. Another question for the committee. To what extent will the apprehended increase of the popularity of working from home after the crisis, might it reduce the property taxes of the city from the downtown buildings, for example? We have not estimated any costs for the time being. We weren't able to estimate these. Of course, the change is obvious. I don't know uh, if my colleagues want to say. Well, we don't have any specific numbers, but I think on that question, we have to make a difference between the short term from the long term. I think that there will be problems uh, with the property taxes in the short term. And, you know, until there is a vaccination that can last, you know, 12 to 18 months. But I think that uh, further along, there's great possibilities that at least the buildings of the downtown will be used. And I think that the most important problem remains in the stores because there's less certainty about the recovery. Madame Plante, are you going to ask the government of Quebec that the city be able to have an, uh, a deficit, and if so, why? Well, first, in the 2020 budget, I already have a deficit, so I need the help of the different levels of government in order to be able to get to budget for uh, obvious reasons. When you include public transportation, it can be up to $500 million dollars in uh, in the monies that I'm missing in my budget right now. But that proposal of the committee seems to me to be very pertinent in a perspective in an investment strategy. If we wish to support the economy, we need leverage. And having a strong strategy with strong projects is part of the leverage in order to be able to stimulate the economy. But right now, and the last thing that I want to say 
in favor of this pertinent idea is that if the governments do not help municipalities, including Montreal, Montreal is not the only one, but we are the biggest uh, budget, municipal budget in Quebec, I only have two options left. One is taxing or cutting in services or both, because that obligation of having a balanced budget right now cannot be moved. So having economists that question that, that law, because it is, it is a law, I find that it is pertinent. It gives oxygen, it opens uh, debates. Could you quantify the financial health that would be necessary from both levels of government? Well, I can tell you, as I was saying, for Montreal, we're talking about it can go easily up to $500 million of money that we don't have. That includes collective transportation, public transportation, where the losses are terrible, of course. And that is despite the efforts of recovery and upturn that we've already done at the City of Montreal to show our goodwill and our wish to find solutions. But after that, how it will be divided up between Quebec and Ottawa, I will let them find a solution because at the end of the day, it's up to them to be able to uh, come and help us, the cities and municipalities. We are on the front lines. The city of Montreal right now, as an example, commits itself in expenses for homelessness, uh, food help, emergency housing, all elements that must be taken into account and understood by the superior levels of government and public transportation, of course, to support the cities. English question. It's difficult to predict how things will go in the months to come, but can you briefly describe what the city would look like if these recommendations are put in place? What are the major changes Montrealers will see in their everyday lives? It is indeed difficult to predict the future. Um, so it's a very difficult question to answer. Um, what we're hoping is, in fact, that Montrealers don't see huge differences. And many of these uh, proposals are to try and attenuate possible problems. So for example, we want public transport to continue. It would be a major difference if it didn't. And so a lot of our, our recommendations are to try and stabilize things and make sure that the, the changes noticed by Montrealers are not too great. a very specific one. In the report, uh, there's a, a lot of, um, there's been a lot of talks around how to make, uh, to make sure that small businesses, for example, uh, have a, uh, can do some electronic com commerce, which I think would definitely make them more resilient. And we've heard it in the past, and it's something that is in the report. So if we know that our businesses are able to do some uh, uh, electro electronic businesses, Maybe most of the people don't go elsewhere in other countries to shop online, and we actually take our businesses. Same thing for a delivery system. So it's I feel I find like it's how do we become more resilient? We adapt to the new situation and make the best out of it, or at least to to. Uh, but for the rest, it's very hard at this point. Maybe in a year, we could say what happened exactly and how it has changed. But it's it's not an easy one at this point. Merci. Maintenant, pour euh, Madame Plante de Gazette, c'est euh, euh, moyennement lié. Um, how can you restore Montreal's joie de vivre with restaurants and bars closed and most people shopping online? Restaurant, uh, restaurateurs are saying that even when they are allowed to reopen, they won't break even operating at 60% capacity. Commercial streets like Saint-Denis were already hurting before the pandemic. How do you plan to rebuild what makes Montreal special? Well, we, as any other big cities, we need to uh, reinvent ourselves and we need to support our small businesses. And that includes our bars and restaurants. And it's not an easy time for them right now, obviously. And we're all waiting for that moment where the government of Quebec and the public health authorities will say, okay, let's do this. Uh, we, can, we can open uh, those uh, establishments. And this is where I find that the city, uh, when we say being innovative, it's about making sure that there's enough space outside so people can operate their businesses. 
within, you know, while making sure that the, uh, dis the social distancing is being respected, how we want to support them with terraces in the future once we can open bars and restaurants. So it's, it's putting all the efforts that, and all the creativity that we can as a city. But then there has to be other level of governments to support those small businesses, of course. Merci. Uh, J'ai d'autres questions en anglais qui uh, s'adressent à Madame Plante sur uh, des sujets connexes. Donc, uh, oui, on peut. Et puis, je vais, je vais, comme je disais, je vais vous libérer. <laughs> Mais merci beaucoup. Et puis, Thank you very much, and I hope that you have all seen this very beautiful report. This is what it looks like. Thank you. Um, several boroughs adopted motion regarding body camera on police officers. What is your take on body cams and when and why did the city change its mind regarding the issue after deciding not to go ahead with them last year? Um, so we've never been against body cam. Uh, where what we were uh, not comfortable with was moving forward with the uh, uh, pilot project that the previous administration had put together and was a failure for, for, for many reasons. And most, uh, the most important one to me is the fact that this, uh, the technology was not able to guarantee that we could use uh, some of the footage uh, in, in court as a proof, both at the provincial and the federal level. So if we're, if we're putting those mechanisms to protect people, and to have a to make sure that uh, police officers are more accountable, it has to be it has to work in court. And there's other reasons as well, but they're all reasons related to the technology and the pilot that was not successful at this point. And after the uh, project pilot, we did say that we would work in Quebec to make another tryout or to put together to move forward with a technology that would work. So that's the that's the nuance. Ici, um, Madame Filato says the technology has evolved and you now want to go ahead with body cams and SPVM officer as soon as you, as you can, but that it needs to be in consultation with Quebec so they are on board. Is there a timeline or a deadline to when, will, to when this will happen? So the conversation already, uh, already happened. So um, what we want is as fast as we can, of course. Uh, though I, I want to make sure that people uh, understand that the body cam, though they're one tool that is that can support uh, transparency and accountability, but there's also other tools that needs to be put together. And I, I want to reiterate that uh, the uh, the check uh, the check street check sorry policy is a very important one that we have been moving forward with the government of Quebec as well to implement in Montreal. There's no, it doesn't exist in Quebec and it needs to happen. This framework that would make sure that street check are more uh, surrounded by uh, rules. Um, so body cam, the, the street check policy, um, and other things like uh, trainings and also raising awareness is is all part of this toolbox that we need to have a better grip on um, uh, possible uh, systemic discrimination and social and racial profiling. From the Gazette, um, do you believe there is systemic racism in Montreal? What do you say to Montrealers who say they've, they've experienced it? been uh, very clear on that matter. For me, there's no shame of, uh, and it's, it, it's a good thing, and it's okay to say that there is systemic discrimination. Um, it doesn't mean that everybody's a racist and that uh, everything needs to be condemned. Like, there, it's about recognizing that there is bias, there is stereotypes 
out there, there is ways on how we've been raised or things we say or things we don't see as well. So I've never had a problem as mayor to say that there is discrimination. And so, and to me, to name it is one first step so we can better move forward, address it, and